uh, a good approach means a good landing. And that's harder to do than it sounds. It's an old maxim that's, that's just so true that, you know, a good landing starts with a good approach. I, it's so cliche, but uh, it, it's true. I mean, a good landing does begin um, usually if you're flying the pattern at pattern altitude. I mean, for me, it starts when, you know, when you're flying back and you're thinking about, okay, what am I dealing with today? What, what strip am I landing on? What, you know, what's the wind? What's the wind doing? What's the temperature? What, how do I feel? I mean, so if you have an issue that's developed, you know, a mile, a mile final, whatever, half a mile final, if you don't correct that issue at that moment when it crops up, it will become a problem over the numbers. But the minute something, the instant something comes up, it should be dealt with. And that will mean a that will mean a good landing. So on slope, on speed, um, with a plan, with an exit strategy if you need one. Airline pilots or an airline flying or commercial operations, there's always a pre-landing brief done, and it's it's quite extensive. Even though we're flying small airplanes, we should have a proper pre-landing brief. And our pre-landing brief is this: is that this will be a normal landing, <coughs> runway 27. If it doesn't look right on the approach, if something comes out in front of us, or if we're not safely down within the one, first one third of the runway, we'll overshoot. And that's our pre-landing brief. So we already have in our minds that if something isn't looking right, we already have it set what we're going to do. And um, with that said though, it's amazing how we are, the human brain works. Because even though we've got it there and we've set it, it's amazing how we still want to get down and not yeah and not do it uh, and I think that's a real challenge in flight training and I think this is where we have an opportunity to really put out safe pilots is right from the get-go get it ingrained and say you know what there's no shame in overshooting there's no shame in going around mm -hmm. if it doesn't look good for any reason punch the power and give it another shot there's absolutely no shame in that the the problems I see especially with um you know, with primary students, is this is that they're um, flying a oscillating approach that varies tremendously in in airspeed, and no two approaches are really the same. You know, one's one's wildly high, one's frighteningly low. If you're high, you're constantly struggling to make it. If you're low, you're constantly readjusting. And so, it's not to say that you can't make great landings out of lousy approaches, but it's that if you want to make consistently good landings you have to have consistently good approaches. If you fly a, a standard approach right down the middle of the plate, 1.3 times VSO, in line with the runway, on the glide slope, you know, the, uh, it's easy to make consistent landings. But at the same time, if you're, if you're, if you're wildly high, if you're, if you're slow, if you're fast, if you, there are all these other variables that you're trying to eliminate right at the point of touchdown, your chances of a successful landing are greatly reduced. You know, you it's it it becomes a dramatic maneuver that requires some perfectly timed control inputs to salvage, and that is not what 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 anybody wants. A way to help that is to reduce as many of the variables as you possibly can. So that's why we start talking about things like pattern altitudes and why those are important. That's why we talk about putting in flaps at the same time uh, every approach when you're first learning or setting a power to exactly the same level every time. Um, now, of course, as you get better and get more experience, you can change two or three variables at a time because you know how those variables interact and you know what sort of result you'll get by changing them. Um, but until you learn that, it really helps to only change one or two things at a time. Good landing should require a little drama. You know, but there's no big, there's no big heroics and, and there's no great timing it's just your, you know, you, you fly into ground effect, you wipe off the power, and you are at an attitude that, that, uh, that, is a, that is just a regular transition to landing. It should, be, it should be smooth, it should be pretty dull. You know, it should not be exciting. It should, it should just be a continuation of, of a series of steps that have begun long ago during the approach phase.